In this video, you will learn about creative cognition and some real life applications. We will start with an activity, so make sure you have a pencil and a piece of paper ready. You're given a hair tie. Come up with as many new uses for it as you can in 15 seconds. Time's up. What did you come up with? Here are some examples of what other people have come up with. Some other examples include a tool used to tie-dye shirts, a keychain, a fidget toy, to hold cords together, and a bunch of other things. Ronald Fink developed the technique of creative cognition by having participants randomly select three objects and gave them one minute to create a new and interesting looking object from them. After this, they were given the name of a category, such as furniture, appliances, transportation, etc. He called the inventions pre-inventive forms because they preceded the creation of the finished product. This demonstrated that you do not have to be a quote-unquote inventor to be creative, and that many creative processes are similar to other processes of cognitive psychology. Now that you know a brief history on the subject of creative cognition, we'll debunk one common misconception about creativity and show two real-life examples of creative cognition at work. Hey. Hey, what's up? I'm really worried about this cognitive psych project I have. What do you mean? Well, my group has to be creative, and I'm super left brain. I mean, that's the reason why I'm an accounting major in the first place. Oh, is that how that works? Yeah, check it. Oh, OK. So basically, if you're left brain, you're analytical, logical, and organized. And if you're right brain, you're super creative and think outside the box. OK, that makes sense. Fake news. This is actually a common misconception. Creativity occurs all throughout the entire brain. In fact, um, certain neural networks are activated when you are creative, not just certain areas. Let's take a closer look. Welcome to Inside the Brain. Check it. These three neural networks all become activated during the process of creative cognition. Lit up in green represents an activation of the executive attention network, which is used in complex problem solving. In red is activation of the imagination network, which is used for imagination. Th then there's the salience network, which is shown in yellow, and that directs one's focus. Studies have shown that children can develop their creativity at a faster rate than adults. These findings are demonstrated in the next scene, which follows a child and an adult over the course of five weeks of piano lessons. Let's take a look at their progress. Alcohol gives you a more childlike mindset and promotes divergent thinking, which enhances creative cognition. This is demonstrated in the following scene. All I want is a grilled cheese, and we don't have a pan or a stove. Ugh, what are we gonna do? I'm so hungry. All I want is a grilled cheese. Ugh, no. What are you guys doing? Oh, hi. Um, trying to make a grilled cheese. What? We don't have a pan or a stove. What do we do? I got you. Oh, she's okay. oh my God. Check it. <laughs> what do you mean? We're gonna use this iron to make a grilled cheese. We're gonna grow up with the iron. How would one even do that? <laughs> Whoa! Oh my God, <laughs> that's sick, dude. Research shows that some aspects of creative cognition are enhanced while under the influence of alcohol. Neural networks are spread throughout the whole entire brain, so the idea of someone being left brain and right brain is a myth. And in order to engage in successful creative cognition, use of all three neural networks is necessary, so too long an imbalance can decrease task completion and imagination. Children have greater flexibility in learning than adults, resulting in more growth in learning and creativity. 
Some aspects of creative cognition are enhanced while under the influence of alcohol. 